This headless professor video is going to talk about measures of central tendency, average, and how they can be determined when we have data which have been grouped into various tables. One rule that will apply here, as it does to all of our determinations of central tendency, is that all of these averages must be within the range of our data set. Let's take a look at a data set. Imagine that we have a number of students, 50 of them, take a homework assignment that has four problems on it. So the possible range of student performance would be between getting none of these problems right or getting all four of these problems right. But let's assume that some of these questions were quite hard and that therefore none of the students got a score of all four correct. Only 11 students got three correct. 16 students got only two correct. Eight 18 students got only one correct, and five students got zero problems correct. So because the range is so important for checking errors, that should be the first thing that we actually calculate. Now I said that we had a theoretical possible range of zero to four in terms of the scores that the students could get. But remember, no one really got all four correct, so no one got a perfect score of four. That means that our actual observed range involves a minimum of zero and a maximum score of three. And therefore, all of our measures of central tendency must be within this range of zero to three. One of the very useful measures of central tendency that I would recommend for this kind of um, situation where we have data in tables would be our old friend, the percent. And the formula for percent is always part divided by whole times 100. So what we would do is determine our whole number of students. Well, that would be an N of 50. Now, if you don't remember that I said we had 50 students to begin with, you could determine that number simply by adding up the frequency column. And if you add up these numbers, you will get our n of 50. We could then figure out which part of our sample divided by the whole of 50 got each one of these scores. And here's what we get. 0% score to 4, 22% score to 3, 32% score to 2, 36% score to 1, and only 10% of the students scored a 0. Another measure of central tendency is the mode, and the mode is the most frequent score. With these kind of data arranged in a table, we just look at what score was the most frequent. Oh, this one right here where 18 students scored a 1. We therefore have a mode of 1. Another measure of central tendency is the mean. In general, I don't think the mean is too useful with data arranged in a table like this with a highly compressed range. But this is the formula for mean the sum of all the scores divided by the number of scores. Now to get this, we would multiply each score times its frequency. 4 times 0, 0. 3 times 11, 33. 2 times 16, 32. 1 times 18, 18. And 0 times 5, 0. We would then add up this column to get the sum of all of our scores. In this case, it happens to be 
73. Then we plug it into the formula, 73, which is our sum of the scores, divided by the number of scores, 50, and we determine our mean for this particular set of data, 1.46. Finally, let's take a look at the median. The median is our middle score, and when we have data arranged like this, the best way to determine the median is to take a look at the percents and ask ourselves the question, where does the cumulative percentage cross the 50% or middle range? And it doesn't matter whether you go from top to bottom or bottom to top. If you start from the top and go down to a score of three, that's only 22% of our sample, but if you add in the 32% that scored a 2, notice we have crossed into the 54% um, cumulative total. That crosses the halfway mark. 2 must be the median. But if you come at it from the other direction, from bottom to top, you get the same thing. If you look at the people who scored a 0, that's only 10%. Add in the 36% who scored a 1, that's only 46% we still haven't crossed the halfway mark. We have to go up to the score of 2 and add in the 32% here, and now we will get a total of 78%. Uh, We've crossed that 50% line. Once again, the median for these data happens to be 2. Notice that all of our measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode, we're within our range of 0 to 3.